Hey, Blockchain Visionaries, I'm George Levy. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how hackers can steal your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies without you even knowing it. But I'll also tell you exactly how you can protect yourself so that doesn't happen. Let's get this going. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the vulnerabilities that are available with cryptocurrencies, how you can be aware of them, and how you can protect yourself from actually getting hacked and losing your crypto. So key thing I want to point out to you is that just like in common everyday life, somebody can actually hold you up, they mug you and they take your money, right? So if you're walking around, say you have, I don't know, a hundred bucks in your pocket, somebody puts a gun against you, says, give me the money and they take it and the person goes away, they stole a hundred dollars from you. Now, you know, in that case that you got mugged, but you could actually be having cryptocurrency and somebody could be hacking you right now. You could be losing all your holdings right now without you even knowing. Um, that's the thing about cryptocurrencies that a lot of people don't understand. Not only that, when you walk around, sometimes you may walk, you know, with a hundred bucks, people with a lot of money walk around with a thousand dollars on them, but most people don't walk around with all of their life savings. When you're dealing in cryptocurrency, unless you know what you're doing and unless you're proactively careful with how you protect your crypto, you can get wiped out. I'll give you the perfect example. Uh, there's a friend of mine. His name is Michael Turpin. He is uh, the founder of Coin Agenda, a very well-known uh, figure in the crypto space. He got hacked with a type of hack called a SIM swap hack. In the process, he lost $24 million worth of cryptocurrency. Now, just to put a couple of things in perspective, Michael losing $24 million, it's a hit, obviously. But fortunately, Michael could overcome the $24 million. And basically, he lost $24 million, but he lived to fight another day. And uh, I'll be telling you more about this as we go through this. But let me give you the whole lesson behind this. The reason is because he actually had $24 million worth of crypto on his phone. And uh, even though you think that your phone has a password, and even though you think that with well, your password you have a two-factor authentication and people can't get into your wallets or whatever it is, that's not really the case. When you're dealing with a mobile device, you're dealing with a device that is usually on a, you have it on a cell phone carrier. And a cell phone carrier has a SIM associated with your card. It's a SIM card. And uh, that SIM card is your phone. And the carriers actually have a record of that SIM card assigned to your phone. But there's a type of hack called a SIM swap hack, where basically, without even taking your phone, they can trick the carrier into believing that a SIM that's on a different device actually belongs to your device. At that moment, then, whatever device you have is no longer being on your carrier. So basically, the other party can actually take over your device, and uh, they have your phone number. They can send messages. They can go back and forth and do a lot of things with it. I'm going to tell you because I personally got SIM swap hacked also. So whereas my friend uh, Michael Turpin lost $24 million, I didn't lose $24 million. In fact, I didn't lose any crypto. And I'll tell you exactly why I was able to get around that. Key things I want to point out in this specific case, and by the way, Michael Turpin is a brilliant individual. It was just a bad stroke of luck. At that moment, he needed some additional crypto in his wallet, and uh, his wallet got hacked. So uh, key things I want you to understand. When you're dealing with mobile wallets, or whether it's actually a computer wallet, wallet, whether it's in your, uh, whether it's on a computer that you have, whether it's actually a web-based wallet, all of those types of uh, wallets are what are known as hot storage. When you're dealing with hot storage, you're talking about having a crypto wallet that's connected to the internet. As a result, it's a vulnerable wallet because a hacker can actually hack into your web-based wallet. They can find a way to get into your computer because it's connected to the internet. They can get into your mobile device. Uh, in the case of mobile devices, they don't even have to get into your phone. They can just do a carry along connect with your carrier and convince them that they are the owners of the phone. In fact, that's what happened to me. One of my phones got actually SIM swap hacked after a person tried for 14 days, every day, every day, every day, trying to trick the carrier into actually turning over control to my phones to somebody else. It actually did happen. And uh, the carrier eventually specifically revealed to me that the person that did it actually was a plant. And that happens. Sometimes people get jobs inside and if they can identify a target, they try to find out who can get access to a person's phone and they can get it. Just telling you, just to be very aware, there's a lot of the SIM swap hacking happening outside. Let me tell you a little bit more about the ways that you can get around that. So the key thing I want to point out is I told you, there's two ways that you can store your crypto. You can store it in a hot wallet. Hot wallet is hot storage. That's anything that's connected to the internet, whether it's your computer, whether it's a mobile device, whether it's a web-based wallet, all of these are hot storage. 
Hot storage is very, very convenient. It's fast. In fact, I always carry some crypto on my phone, um, just enough to make pay payments. You know, if I'm going into a restaurant, I can pay with crypto. If I actually want to send some money to someone else and I want to have it handy, I can walk around with some crypto with me. Um, I don't put all of my holdings in crypto into my mobile device. I only keep what I want to do. It's just like, for example, when you walk around with your wallet, you might carry a couple of hundred bucks because you go into a restaurant. Uh, you don't want to put your entire life savings in your wallet. Same thing with these uh, with uh, when you're dealing with cryptocurrencies. You don't want to walk around with your entire life savings on a device that's connected to the internet because it can get hacked and get uh, you can get wiped out. So let me just give you some examples of ways that you can get around that to protect yourself from SIM swap hacks. And that's doing something called cold storage. Cold storage is when you take your cryptocurrency and you pull it out of any device that's connected to the internet onto some way to store it offline. I'm going to give you some examples right now. One of them is this right here. This is a paper wallet. This is actually a wallet that was generated using an, uh, an address called bitaddress.org. Don't use bitaddress.org. You can actually download the software to do this and then connect it, load it into your computer, and then generate this offline. You never want to do it on the online version of bitaddress.org because then you're revealing your Bitcoin address and the private key corresponding to that Bitcoin address. But what I want to point out to you is that this is actually a perfectly valid Bitcoin wallet. In fact, if you want to send some Bitcoin, you can send it here. But what I will tell you is that I'm also revealing the private key. So I know that if you were to send some Bitcoin here, everybody else knows what that private key is. So that's not a very safe way for me to be able to keep this. So what I would do is I would just share this Bitcoin address and I would send Bitcoins here. And I would never reveal to anybody what the private key is. This is how I'm able to spend the Bitcoins that are actually sent to this Bitcoin address. But this is one way that you can actually take your Bitcoins, send them into a paper wallet, and then just basically keep this somewhere else. It could be in a, in a drawer. You can put it in a safe storage box. There's many people that do that with paper wallets. That's one way to do cold storage. Now, there's other ways to do cold storage, and I want to give you some of the best examples right now. The first thing I want to point out to you is uh, right now the story I told you about Michael Turpin. Here is Michael's story. And... Uh, he got attacked using this called SIM swapping. He lost $24 million, $24 million to hackers. And uh, so Michael Turpin actually was attacked and he actually created, he did a lawsuit. He did a lawsuit against AT&T and the lawsuit was for $200 million. And unfortunately, the judge ha a judge has dismissed that $200 million lawsuit. Um, so it shows you that these carriers actually, they're protected. If you get SIM swap hacked and you lose your crypto, there's nothing you can do. You can't go to your AT&Ts and say, hey, I lost my crypto. They'll just basically say, it's not our problem. That's not what the phone's for. The phone's for actually making phone calls and we really have no liability to be able to, if you get SIM swap hacked. So giving you that as an advantage and for you to understand that your phone is a vulnerable attack vector and you can actually get, you can get SIM swap hacked, you wouldn't even know that your phone was taken over. I actually found out accidentally, um, and it was because my phone, um, I was, uh, it was really late at night, wasn't even using my phone, and my wife let me know that my business partner had called her and told her that, asking if my mom was okay. And uh, she's like, well, his mom, I think, is okay. So then I asked, I started talking with my partner, he says, yeah, I just received a text message from you saying that your mom got into an accident and you need Bitcoin from me. So technically what this person had done was take over my phone and pretended to be me and then started texting all of my contact friends to see if any of them would actually fall prey and send bitcoins to the hacker. And uh, the hacker that eventually did the SIM swap hack was actually taken over by the, uh, by the task force in the, in the United States uh, government. They actually cracked them down and uh, the SIM swap hacking team of people that did this have actually been apprehended. But the things I want to point out to you is that those hackers are out there. So just to give you some other aspects right now, one of the big stories right now was a, this specific uh, gentleman right here, story put out. First time he was SIM swapped was in 2018. And he got crypt, SIM swapped so many times that he launched a company for preventing SIM swapping. And uh, so he's basically launched his own company on uh, to fight SIM swapping. But what I want to tell you is this is one way that you can get SIM swapped. So... In order to even work, not even have to worry about this, just take your crypto off the mobile device. And the way you do that, like I mentioned, is going to cold storage. One of the ways is a paper wallet. 
But the other way and the preferred way is to actually use a hardware wallet. If you're not familiar with a hardware wallet, a hardware wallet is a device that actually lets you take your bitcoins, move them onto this device, and that device is no longer connected to the internet. So the information is captured inside this device. This device is not connected to the internet and only you can access it when you want to reach your cryptos inside. It's a very safe place for you to store your cryptocurrency. Some of the more popular brands are Treasure. There's also KeepKey is a very popular brand. And additionally, there's Ledger. Now Ledger, KeepKey, and Treasure are the most popular. There are other cryptocurrency hardware wallets, but those three are have been the most popular ones. And uh, what I will tell you is, if you want to buy a hardware wallet, always make sure that you use the actual page for these uh, for these devices. Don't buy it from a third party. Like for example, there's a big problem with people sometimes may want to buy a hardware wallet because it's a good price and they buy it at say eBay for instance. Well, you have a problem there because that device, the person that sells you that device already knows the private keys for that wallet. So if you load your crypto in there, they're gonna wipe you out. Never ever ever use a hardware wallet that's not directly purchased new from the provider. And like as I mentioned, the providers I want you to look at are Treasure, that's T-R-E-Z-O-R dot I-O, Treasure dot I-O. There's key, uh, Keep Key, which is bought out by a company called Shapeshift. So that's shapeshift.com slash Keep Key. And the last one I want you to take a look at is Ledger. Ledger is ledger.com. And those three hardware wallet companies are very reputable. They have very, very solid uh, security protocols. And I highly encourage you, if you're actually going to be holding cryptocurrency, to look at getting hold of a hardware wallet and use it as a very solid way for you to preserve your cryptocurrency off any hot storage and onto cold storage, preferably in a hardware wallet. I hope you found this valuable. I hope this information serves you much and that you learn something in the process. Uh, if you haven't signed up yet, I encourage you to click subscribe and uh, hit like if you like this video. And I look forward to seeing you more often. I publish brand new videos every single week. And I always say we're changing the world one blockchain at a time. I'm George Levy. Thank you for watching.